My name is Anna Mandulo. I am in Sydney and I am the founder and current president of the Philippine Food Movement Australia Incorporated. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Corina Reyes. I'm first secretary and consul based in the Embassy of the Philippines in Canberra. We think that uh, we can call our food, our cuisine, unique because we cannot actually describe it in one word. Unlike our neighbors in Southeast Asia where you can readily say that uh, their food is spicy, like the common food of uh, Brunei, Indonesia, and Malaysia, and even Thai food is spicy. For the Philippines, you cannot encapsulate our food in just one word. Uh, we have a perfect term for it in Filipino. We call it malinamnam, which is more commonly understood as umami. Because you cannot just say it's sour, it's sweet, or salty, or spicy. There's a deep and complex uh, taste in our food. So that's why I think our, our food is unique because it cannot be encapsulated by just one, by just one flavor. It, it is a total experience. Uh, I think it's unique because from all the readings and from history, we were influenced by many different cultures. 300 years of Spanish food, bread, by Chinese in our um, history, Malays, um, American. So the real fusion, if you ask me, is Filipino food. But then the, the Filipinos back then also had indigenous um, produce and they were already cooking. So all of these influences makes the Filipino food. Uh, we think that uh, this is brought about by our rich history, our colonial influences brought so much on our food, our Spanish and American influences. But aside from that, even our pre-Hispanic times already have, our country already has very close engagements with our neighbors, with the Chinese our Southeast Asian neighbors, and that's why Islam was brought in first to the Philippines before Christianity because we were already doing trade with our Asian neighbors. And that is to say that it's because we have a strong indigenous culture. Our indigenous communities continue to influence our cuisine up to this day. And what happens is when you have more than 7,600 islands, you really have different flavors. Uh, we don't have a national adobo, for instance. Adobo differs from one island to the next because uh, there are many, many cultures that can be found, many languages that can be found in our, in our archipelago. My name is uh, Fred Batalona. I'm a chef here in Melbourne. I am the owner of Barangay, a catering and Filipino pop-up restaurant uh, here in Melbourne, where we introduce Filipino food and culture to um, Australians here. Um, I think it's because it's what we use as a sharing point. I think most cultures um, integrate their idea of what it is to be together. It's usually during when we eat together. It's like when we make food that are specifically from our hometown and that's how we bond. And usually with food, there's an essence of culture and that's a very big part of it. Um, and it rooted from how we are in the community per se, it will be part of a fiesta, a part of a holiday, it will be part of a tradition in someone's home and or someone's region. So food and culture are well intertwined, especially for any like um, older generations of um, country like the Philippines and also like the Japanese, the Koreans, even the Europeans have the same thing. I think um, very um, traditional. I, the Filipinos are very traditional. Um, and when it comes to um, terms of um, resources, there's plenty of resources in the Philippines um, from, you know, wood crops and um, in a poultry and everything and then what make us unique 
for me is we turn our food into like uh, our palate, yun taste natin. And like kung baga palate kasi ng Filipinos, we have this sweetness, salty, and then sometimes it's sour. So yun dun lang tayo nagbe-base, then we will just make it. And then uh, unique ang food natin because in our food, maano natin yung uh, like the foreign influence natin yan will mga Spanish like meron tayong paella valenciana meron tayong lomi the Chinese meron tayong uh, what so na dishes na maano mo na talagang influence ng mga foreign na uh, countries na nagano sa atin mga ninuno natin but there's there's more to Filipino food than just Filipino food. You know, there's a lot of different flavors, um, a lot of um, influence from different countries. Um, so it's something that you don't want to miss. Um, I, I mean, I've tried different cuisine, but I mean, I don't know if I'm being biased because I'm Filipino. I've, like, I've always wanted to go back to eating Filipino food because it's it's for me it's home. But if you like, if you compare it to other dishes, it's it's always very um, complex um, in the sense. Um, there's the sour flavor, the sweet flavor, the salty flavor. So, um, and it's something that's so unique that you have to um, you have to try it. It's good that like us, like me, kung introducing our our dishes in foreign countries, like here in Australia, especially in mostly naman na kumbaga nakikita mo ngayon kumbaga in America and all the kumbaga may marami na rin nag-open ng mga Filipino restaurant so that will become the starting kumbaga ano ng ano natin na makilala in over the world in kumbaga yun yung talagang input and because you know I think for Filipinos um, we are really proud of our food, in a way we're proud of our cuisine. In a way that um, we want our meals, our food to taste the way we have been accustomed to it. Like uh, many Filipinos abroad would uh, show off or would proudly talk about their grandmother's adobo or their mother's tinola. So for us, I think there is that a sense of pride in how we know or understand our food. That's probably why uh, we wouldn't. Filipinos before, you know, uh, the Filipino diaspora won't uh, venture into restaurants or won't go to a restaurant serving Filipino food because they would think that uh, the food that is cooked in their own homes is better. But here in Australia, we're seeing that unravel already. There are a lot of Filipino restaurants in Melbourne and in Sydney, the foodie capitals of this country and we're very proud of how they are. Most of them came about during the pandemic. Uh, a lot of them became famous and really thrived during the pandemic. So we're hoping that this Filipino food movement would continue to, to thrive here in Australia. I think it's great. I think um, with the emergence of Sarai, Cariton, Sorbetes, you have Barcada here in Melbourne um, and you have Cebu Lechon in um, Sydney. They're kind of like creating this more of a movement that's um, different from what we're used to. Because like these are operators that are actually well-known chefs or at least well-known operators in the industry. They're not just someone who wants to open a Filipino restaurant. And you could tell the difference. And don't get me wrong, Filipino food is amazing if it's home cooked, but it doesn't translate to an operational sense in commercially. So if you don't have the know-how on how to operate a kitchen or operate a restaurant, then it becomes just kind of like a cooking, home cooking setup where things are not on time, things are not probably cooked properly, and there's no level of care in preparation. Because like as chefs, we tend to remember that what we use as ingredients and what processes do we use and how we serve them are very important. So by the time we get to the final outcome of the food, we give you the full experience of what we're trying to sell you. And it's not just, oh, we're just gonna choose from the calendaria. And calendarias are great, but I think if they're not well done or like done properly, then it's not, then people don't have the 
greatest experience of them. For us Filipinos, I think if I go to a calenteria, regardless of the quality, I'll feel happy because at least I know it's like like Filipino food, you know. But for non-Filipinos, they would think that our food is subpar or it's not as great, which is you know it's hard to um, represent something when there's no actual um, history of good food in relation to Filipino cuisine. I think we need to, you know, continue the conversations. Like, um, it's not just cooking it and, you know, inviting your friends. It's like going out and supporting that business and inviting your friends and create the conversations because it's going to start from us. I keep saying that all these chefs who are popular now because they're highlighting Filipino food, all these restaurants, it's not just their role. It's the community's role to build it. If we want this to be Yolk, bigger than eggshell, so I used it to eggs in here is, and put it directly then single. It's our. We have to play our part. Not, but just, let's not rely on the big names or brands or organizations to do this. The community will have to step in. We have to be. It has to be collective. Yeah, uh, for me, kumbaga, ano ko, masaya ako dahil uh, kumbaga maraming Pilipino now has been stand up na maging businessman or mag ano, to venture into restaurant na syempre, uh, we are all imba- im- parang ambassador tayo, ambassador on our country which is Philippines, kumbaga ambassador tayo on our food, you know, kumbaga nagre-reflect doon yung culture natin and then may showcase natin na uh, ng our food is very kumbaga ano naman talaga very worth trying for na um, matikman ng ibang uh, ano na, not only our kababayan but of course sa uh, ibang mga kumbaga mga Aussies dito sa Australia as well and then kumbaga masaya ako kasi marami na and then the dumbe kumbaga mas marami mas maganda para uh, just like other kumbaga nationalities like Chinese kahit magkakatabi sila o something kumbaga marami pa rin nagpupunta because kilala na yung food nila and then of course Filipino just like here in Bendigo just only one kumbaga two store lang dito yung yung, yung uh, restaurant ko and then uh, kumbaga nakikilala na nila ang Filipino food through my restaurant and then marami namang uh, nagre-repeat repeaters ng mga OC to really try our food they just love it like especially the, the soup the lomi or something so yun well I think um, malaking influence yung tourism eh so um, most ng mga customers namin na locals and even yung mga um like mga Asians, other Asian um, customers, like pumupunta sila sa restaurants because nagpunta na sa Philippines or nakapunta na sa Philippines or they're planning to go to the Philippines. So I think important yung tourism. Um, well, Japan is very popular. Jap- Jap- Japanese um, dish in particular. It's because, I mean, you know, lahat ng tao, they go to Japan for holiday. Even Bali. Even, um, you know, China. So, um, I think malaking influence ang tourism um, sa food. So, um, I suppose um, pag naging like, okay yung tourism sa country natin and mas maraming tao ang nag-visit, mas marami rin yung maghahanap ng Filipino dish. So, for me, that's important. We, we are still starting. Um, when I got here in Australia four and a half years ago, we didn't have that much yet. Well, I'm based in Canberra. We don't have much Filipino restaurants. But even um, just two years ago with the pandemic, some of the restaurants just came out here in Canberra during that time. So I think we're still on the starting line in as far as mainstreaming our food is, is concerned. Chinese, Japanese, Thai uh, food restaurants were there for a long time already, and were able to develop their brand in terms of in terms of food. We're just lucky that uh, Australians are very, we can call them global citizens. They appreciate international cuisine, so we're quite confident that we'll get there. Uh, uh, hoping that. Um, other restaurants, not necessarily Filipino restaurants, will adapt 
some of our food, some of our flavors. Like uh, there's a dessert place here in Canberra. I think there's they have a similar chain in Sydney that, for example, they had ube ice cream. So they're not necessarily a Filipino restaurant, but because of the growing influence of ube, they, we had an ube explosion uh, two years ago. They started to adopt our flavors as well. Well, I think it's important that um, you have um, communities that support you. So that's one thing. Um, there's a, a community here, the Filipino Food Movement Australia, which is very um, supportive of mm-hmm. Filipino restaurants. Um, so that's one thing. Um, they do have like pop up um, dinner every season um, to sort of educate uh, locals and other, um, other people regarding Filipino food. So, the influence of other people um, sa, sa lahat ng tao, I think that's important. So, support group, I suppose. Uh, as a, 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 a Filipino chef here in Australia, of course, I uh, just want that everybody will find our uh, uh, Filipino dish na makakatatap sa ano na na, oh, if kakaiba ang Filipino dish, kung baga, um, babalik-balikan talaga nila. So, I gonna make sure na talagang, kung baga, maanmat kung whatever na may, kung anong meron tayo sa Pilipinas is they gonna uh, have it here in Australia the authenticity of the food itself and uh, of, of course we need to make na maano nila na yung taste it will be, be taste kapag taste yung color yung uh, ano ng food natin may showcase ng maganda I think I want them to see how um, how amazing it is because like our food is similar to all Southeast Asian food they're flavorful they're fragrant they're full on but the thing is like our bal- in terms of balance of how our food is our food is really rich so I want them to know how good our food is, you know, like how amazing and how you could technically say, oh, okay, they're kind of like the same as every other Southeast Asian food elsewhere. They're not bad. And I think it's through storytelling and also like imparting them some of the history of how our food became to happen or like what it is. Like, for example, adobo. Adobos are very good like, first representation of what we can do as Filipino food because it can be sweet, sour, salty, savory, and it could be any kind of protein, vegetables you want it to be. So that's kind of like a flavor bomb in a simplistic way, whereas you don't have to do so many things. And if you use that as a catalyst for like how our food is, it's just like you will have a fiesta in your mouth. And that's, I think, that's something that I... I want people to know that when you eat Filipino food, it's just a full-on orgasm <laughs> going around in that mouth, you know, and that the flavors will just literally penetrate you, and that's very um, flavor. Yeah. Okay. Let's get Let's pressing. Salt. You can add the water in there. Okay. Normally, you would use warm water just so there's two pressings that you do. So the first uh, one. We're here no- for that actually to promote Filipino culture to promote our ties with with Australia. For us, we make it a point for the embassy to always serve Filipino food in the events that the ambassador hosts. And we do that by working with our with the Filipino restaurants and chefs who are here, who are based here in Canberra, and even those from outside of state. We work with, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, uh, there's a Melbourne-based group, Andre Pinay, so we work with them in some of our events. In Sydney, the Filipino Food Movement Australia, we have also worked with them. So we are very cognizant of the local talent that is available in Australia because they better under they know and they understand better the Australian palate. So we try to work with them to make sure that we introduce our food to them. We have several events throughout the year. Uh, Filipino Food Month, Independence Day, and of course Pasco, Christmas, a very big Filipino event where we always feature and highlight our food. We are happy that um, 
Woolworths is a big partner. They have uh, over 200 Woolworths stores feature uh, Filipino ingredients on their shelves. So we hope that with over 400,000 Filipinos in Australia and a growing base of Australian foodies and enthusiasts, more food will be available in the mainstream. Okay, okay. so we've got chicken here. Some chicken, about 1.7 to 1.8 kilograms. So we're going to be marinating it in a little bit of soy sauce and calamansi. I think it's because we lack the... Because Filipinos, as a, as a culture in different countries, we like to assimilate ourselves. So the moment we go to a country, we try to allow ourselves to be like, be part of the crowd or be Australians or follow the culture's way. So that way we don't tend to rub them the wrong way. Whereas like Chinese and other national like Thai, Vietnamese, they don't care. (laughs) This is our food. This is how we are. You're going to eat it. Even their menus are like in Thai and um, Thai, Vietnamese. There, it's hard to pronounce. Like our food is actually not hard to pronounce, but um, we tend to whitewash some of our things so that people can eat our food and they could try it. But um, I think it's just you know the confidence to to say this is who we are, this is what we represent, and you're gonna like it. You know we're afraid of rejection, and I think most everyone is. But you can't go forward without trying to fail, without trying to not allow people to say bad things about you because that's how you improve and I think with the other nationals they're just not afraid and they have good like they have better support systems as well I think um, that our community kind of lacks in a sense we support our own kind for a time being but if they're not good we're the worst critics we're like so bad that we would say oh this is not food I can cook at home and without being mindful that that kind of comment will destroy a business and will not allow it to improve further whereas if you say you go to the restaurant owner or you give a actual like criticism that's you know that's not bad just to help them improve and that's that's the only way we can actually create more of this community and with Sarai opening with um Vicariton setting up that standard people are aspiring on that as well and um we're doing the same thing so that way we just like you know create that kind of level of okay this is how we should represent ourselves and that's like a guideline because in the end of the day if someone wants to do this or someone wants to like create something filipino they're able to look at like what we have on the market and say okay maybe i could do that and follow the footsteps so that way we can open up 10 different filipino restaurants doesn't matter because like, at the end of the day, people will want to eat something different. And there's not much Filipino restaurants anyways. <laughs> you know what? It's interesting because when we first came together, a group of us, to, you know, form the movement, we all had that thought that why is it that there's a fire restaurant in every corner? <laughs> in every suburb in Sydney. Whereas we are the third, we used to be the third largest market group. Now we're the fifth. And why is that? So that's a question. I think because Filipinos love to cook at home and you will you, you'll go out, a lot of well, the older generations, I can I'm not generally. It's not, I'm not generalizing, but in older generations, we go out and eat the restaurant. There's always that job that I can do a better and better. This is not the way I make, or my pizza makes this better, or you know. Whereas you see other cultures like Malaysians, you see them eating at the Malaysian restaurant, bringing their friends, you know, are Chinese, they support. I think there's a lack, maybe of supporting the local businesses or maybe we don't have that much businesses yet you know to gain traction it's it's not enough to make noise within the community we have to go out of that in our in most of our um events we we support all the filipino food businesses but we try to create events outside where outside of the the majority of the Philippines are like in Sydney, it's in Western Sydney. We try to do our pop-ups 
outside of that community because we already know that we are going to support the businesses that are existing there that we want to get out of that. We want to promote Filipino food with people who are not Filipino. I mean, if we try to encourage people of uh, Filipino, so if you can attend an event, bring a friend, you know, if we have picnics, bring a friend so that they can taste. Bite your office mate. We have to get out of that circle. Um, as I've been a chef here in Melbourne for quite a long time now, um, I've been here for eight years. And during my time, as I progressed with my career, I wanted to be originally a certified pastry chef, which I became pastry chef regardless. Um, did that for a few years. And among the time that I've been working with people that are not Filipino, they always ask me, where are the good Filipino places to eat in? And as I progress and progress to like, you know, a head chef position where I create menus, I always want to impart some of my um, culture into it. So I'll use adobo sauce or I'll use something Filipino, like um, something sweet in bananas or actually use corn in desserts. Those are things that are kind of like a mixture of what we do. And then along the way, um, COVID happened. We all know everything shut down. So during that time, I had enough time to reflect and think of what I want to move forward with as a chef. And if I want to open something, and to me, that was, what would I represent that would be good? Because for me, the reason why I did Barangay is for me to allow myself to cook something that I would want to eat, that I would want to remember of home by. Uh, because sometimes whenever I feel like kind of not in the right funk, I would usually start cooking and that's my safe space. And if I feel homesick and I want to go back to the Philippines, I would just cook something that's reminding me of home. Most commonly, I would do like arroz caldo because that's something that's really warm. Um, and it just fills you up nicely. And I thought barangay would be a good extension of that, where I'm able to recreate any cuisine that's Filipino in every single region that I can think of. And then pair it with something that's um, inspired by Filipino, like for the drinks, we do cocktails that are inspired by Filipino flavors and regions and all those things. So that's my go-to and that's the reason why I did Barangay. Our food is really delicious. If you, I mean, we eat it every day. We love it. And right now, there's a lot of noise in the Philippines actually about the culinary movement. A lot of um, farmers now actually focusing on reviving, you know, produce that aren't really popular. And a lot of restaurants are actually focusing on Filipino ingredients, indigenous ingredients of Philippines, and fine dining restaurants of Philippines are serving Filipino food inspired. And it doesn't have to be really, you know, the way that it was made before. Food evolves. We have different ingredients, we have different um, locations. So, Let's support these Filipino food businesses. I think it's the only way that the community uh, can, you know, add and contribute if we want the Filipino culinary heritage here in Australia to, you know, to celebrate it. We have to do it collectively, together. Um, that's the only way. So if you are, there's a Filipino restaurant near you, go dine there. I mean, if you. I know you, everybody has their own version of it, but supporting Filipino businesses, small businesses, in the way that they can work as a community, we grow as well. Thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. Oh, Anna. that's it. Thank you. That's Nick. it. <laughs>